Hey there, and welcome back to History Insight. I'm your host, Andy Dahls, and today we've got some pretty cool history to share with you. We're diving into the legendary Swinging Bridge in Bassett, Virginia. Now, even though it no longer exists, I know many of you that are familiar with Bassett history have probably heard of it. And if you're just watching this video out of curiosity, trust me, there's so much to learn. So let's jump right into it. Okay, let's set the scene. It's the Roaring Twenties, and Bassett Furniture is making waves in the region, earning the title of Furniture Capital of the World. But life back then was quite different from what we're used to today. You see, the people living in this community faced a unique challenge, the Smith River. It flowed right through the heart of Bassett, and folks had to make a tough choice. They could live on one side of the river or the other. Housing was scarce, and if you wanted to be close to the factory, well, good luck finding an available home. The factories built housing and offered those for lease, but those filled up fast and finding somewhere to live with convenience got increasingly difficult. Now, Bassett did have a few bridges, like the Iron Trust Bridge in North Bassett, a steel bridge connecting the JD manufacturing facilities to Trent Hill, and another Iron Trust Bridge at the southern end of Main Street. Early on, there were even a few small and primitive swinging bridges in North and South Bassett that didn't last very long. Those living on the other side of the river on Riverside Drive woke up every morning staring at the factory across the water with no direct access. They had to take the long way around, walking up the road, crossing the upper bridge, and then walking back down Main Street just to reach work. Frustrated by this inconvenience, some resourceful residents came up with an idea. They believed they could construct a bridge from their Riverside neighborhood, stretch it across the Smith River, and connect it to the other side. It was a bold plan, but if successful, it would open up a world of opportunities for quicker travel to and from Main Street and the factories. Fast forward to 1937 and a group of determined men took on the challenge. We're talking about Robert L. Hutcherson, Raymond Fulp, Mason Freeman, Hillard Castle, and Sam Turner. Using a small boat to transport supplies and fording the river back and forth, they managed to complete the first operational bridge in just over two weeks. They anchored the bridge's supports to a sycamore tree on the west side and a locust post on the east side. The bridge builders are looked back on with fondness, shown here is Robert L. Hutcherson in 1969, one of the builders of the Swinging Bridge. He, along with the others, were all residents of Riverside Drive, and we can look back on them all as having played a vital role in its construction. These salt-of-the-earth men worked tirelessly even after their regular work shifts and on Saturday afternoons to bring this incredible bridge to life. It's also important to mention the cost of building the bridge was partially covered by generous donations from the residents all along Riverside Drive. And the support didn't end there. Many of the building materials were donated by deep-pocketed gentlemen like W.W. W. Sale, who was the president of Blue Ridge Hardware and Supply Company, Bassett Furniture not only provided spare lumber, but also helped cover some costs. Talk about true community spirit. Unfortunately, over the years, the bridge faced its fair share of challenges. Recurring flooding took its toll, causing the bridge to go out of service for repairs at least five times. The trusty old sycamore that had stood strong and anchored the west side so many years died and started to rot. But the community was determined to keep this vital connection intact. In 1956, Bassett Furniture stepped in and took over the maintenance of the bridge. They recognized its importance to the community and reinforced it with two support wires and several strong poles. The bridge was given a new lease on life, standing strong against the forces of nature. Now, as progress marched forward, the bridge faced yet another challenge in 1959. The state decided to widen Riverside Drive, which meant some adjustments had to be made. The workers responded by shortening the bridge, but they made its connection stronger than ever before. It was a testament to their ingenuity and commitment to preserving this iconic structure. By the 1960s, the Swinging Bridge had become an integral part of daily life in Bassett. Nearly 200 people crossed the bridge each day, relying on it for their commute, and it became a symbol of unity within the community. The bridge even played a role in fostering connections between families, like when Sam Turner's daughter Frances married Beck Nelson and they ran the Nelson grocery store on the other side of the bridge, drawing people over from Main Street. The Swinging Bridge became an iconic fixture in Bassett, representing the resilience and spirit of classic Americana. Its rise and decline mirrored the changes in the community itself. As businesses and job opportunities declined, so did the need to maintain the bridge. In later years, as transportation options increased and traffic on the bridge started to die down, Bassett Furniture started to realize that there was little benefit to maintaining the bridge and assuming the potential liability for possible risk to life that such a bridge invited. The company eventually erected an ominous sign that read, Persons using this bridge do so at their own risk and not at the invitation of Bassett Furniture Industries Incorporated. On September 21, 1979, a devastating flood swept through the area, unleashing over five inches of rain within a short span of time. The village of Bassett bore the brunt of this weather event, experiencing severe damage. The torrential downpour eroded the foundations around the bridge, posing a significant threat to its structural integrity. 
Faced with the perilous condition of the bridge and the instability of the riverbank, authorities made the difficult decision to dismantle the bridge in order to ensure the safety of the community. Jim Philpott, speaking on behalf of Bassett Furniture, acknowledged the impact of the flood, stating, If not for the destructive force of the flood, the bridge would have remained standing. He further emphasized the inherent danger posed by the bridge, remarking, It was a potentially hazardous structure. We hope the community understands that it was, in a way, an extension of our company. In an impressive display of teamwork, Junior Amos, Calvin Lusk, and David Compton devoted approximately two and a half hours to dismantling the compromised bridge. Calvin Lusk, serving as the final person to cross the bridge, marked the end of an era. Now, people who were alive during its lifetime reminisce about fishing off of it, jumping up and down on it, and other things. Many of the folks who remembered it when they were younger speak of how they either were too frightened to cross it or were scared when they actually did. Some even braved the bridge with their bicycles. Who could blame folks for being a little nervous? After all, there were times when the Smith River below could be quite imposing. Despite the loss of an iconic emblem of small town life, we are fortunate to have many stories and memories of the bridge, the community it supported, and the hardworking individuals who built it. So there you have it, the fascinating tale of the legendary Swinging Bridge in Bassett, Virginia. I hope you enjoyed this little documentary today and delving into the history of this remarkable structure. If you found this video interesting, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel. By subscribing, you'll help us grow and create more captivating content just for you. And thanks for tuning in, and until next time, this is Andy Dahl signing off from History Insight, and I'll catch you on the next adventure.